Now for the gospel. That's a hard one, isn't it? My gosh, what is going on here? Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation, whatever that means. Drunkenness, I know what that means. Where is it this life and the day that does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap? Wow. So he's saying one possible outcome is all this disaster. Nations will fight, nations will be conquered, and things will happen. But what he's saying is, don't just sit around and let it happen. Get off your butts and do something. Discipleship, discipleship, discipleship. Even if you know the end is not really certain. Last night we're at a basketball game. Woodlands played tip and canoe. And now uh, there's the fourth and fifth graders, I think. And uh, they had two players about this tall. I couldn't believe they were going, can we see their birth certificates? <laughs> and the, the Woodlands kids, you know, they, being a charter school and all, they had this gymnasium upstairs and uh, really in rough shape because it was part of Holy Cross Catholic Church. And they said, well, we're going to lease it to the school. So the school has it. And so they redid the whole surface. It's like, it's, it's better than the bucks. But they can't use it. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Well, they can use, some other people can come in and use it. That's part of the contract in the small print. You can use it on, you know, Sunday night at 9 o'clock at night or whatever. So the Woodlands kids never had a chance to play together. They have this great basketball court. They can't use it. Okay. So that lies a background. That's an excuse, okay? So the game last night... You know, this going back and forth, and it's fun to watch these kids running around. You know, they have no, they're dribbling, they're catching, they're just all over the ball at once, vroom, and uh, they score a basket. Hey, a basket. The other team. <laughs> and the other team scores another one. Okay, come on, Willis. And this team scores another one, and another one. Pretty soon it's getting to be halftime, and it's what, 16 to 0? Not a lot of scoring, not a lot of high scores in this game. But as the game progressed, these Woodlands kids were just busting their butts, trying to make it happen. These two tall guys, you know, they could rebound, they'd catch it, throw it back up. And these other kids are trying to get it. <laughs> these other tall kids are just like, just throwing it up. And the crowd's like, hey, get those tall kids off, make it even, you know, give us a chance. Well, the score ended up being 30 to 2. <laughs> but I tell you what, even though these Woodlands kids saw that the end was near, <laughs> That they were just getting creamed. They kept playing. They played their hearts out. You know, they didn't care. It was just a game. You know, they were just as intense that last minute than they were the first minute. Like, that's really something. You know, that's exactly what he's talking about here. These kids just never gave up. They gave it their all. They just weren't sitting there going, oh, well, you know. Isn't there a 10-run rule? There isn't softball. Come on now. Give us a chance. Mercy points. Was that mercy something or other? Jesus is saying this is exactly what we're looking for. We're, we're looking for you not to give up hope. We're asking you to keep, keep praying for strength, and I'll give you strength all that you could ever handle for all this stuff that's going on that, that, that you guys cause and what's going on in the world. Focus on me. Focus on my promises and, my, and the hope that I will redeem you in the end and that I am with you now in the present. There's also a TV show, I don't know if you've ever seen it before, Restaurant Impossible. Food Network? Anyway. Chef Robert Irvine comes to some, some, some restaurants all over the country. They say, we're, we're failing, could you come and help us? So he gets $10,000 in two days to, to turn this whole restaurant around. And he's pretty straightforward. <laughs> he's pretty blunt. I mean, they, they come and say, okay, now this is what's going well and this is what's not going well. And Robert will take a look and say, well, let's see the menu, let's taste your food, let's check out your kitchen, let's check out how your, what your menu is like, let's check out how the quality of food, let's see the quality of the service, let's see the, the, the ambiance. He just revamp the whole thing, just tear it down almost to the studs and redo it, redo the menu, show them how to cook some other types of things. But the thing is, the people have to be open for it. They have to say, well, we need help, whatever you need to do, just do it. And so Robert will tell him point blank, you need to fire this person, and you need to do this, and you need to do that. And sometimes it's hard for people. And, and they walk off because they're angry and upset because it's very hurtful to know the truth sometimes. And then a day later, they'll come back because, you know, they're on the show. They just can't walk off on the show. So they come back, and, and, and soon he transforms it. 
with, with the help of a lot of people, designers and, and carpenters, and he makes the place just wonderful. A wonderful menu, a wonderful staff, a wonderful ambiance, chairs, everything else. And the people usually come in blindfolded and he shows them, and they're usually in tears, and it's their life's work, it's their life's savings that's been transformed into something new and exciting. But the key is they had to open themselves up for it. The key is we have to open ourselves up for this gift from God. We have to open ourselves up and say, work on me. Whatever it takes, make it happen. Because I ain't doing it myself. It's not going to happen the way I want it to happen. So just let it be as you want it to be. I think this is what a lot of Luke is all about. Letting the Spirit act in your lives. Letting the Spirit act in Christ's life. Letting the Spirit act in the disciples' life. Letting the Spirit act in our lives. To make something new. To make something exciting. To take all this stuff that's going on, make sense. Or let it be that we can survive it. Or somehow make it a little bit better. So that our future generations can continue to live in something that is good. And full of hope. That Christ has his fingerprint on it. And we know that, that God is part of this world because we see it. And we know it and we feel it. And the times we're open for it, we know it in our hearts that God is there. Transforming us and making us new. Like the new creation that God promises for all of us. Amen.